Good morning. Welcome to Morning Call. We had a good week last time around. This morning looks a bit flattish, but Infosys did give a bit of a lift to the markets on Friday. So now we are at 6,000 plus on the Nifty, and the big question is whether we can carry on with this good word for the market in the face of what has been increasingly bad news on the macro front. Uh, this week too, we'll have lots of earnings, and let's hope that some of the earnings will be as good as the first couple that we've seen last week. Natalia, hi. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the global setup? That's more or less steady state over the weekend. Steady, but all global markets have pulled back quite a bit uh, after Ben Bernanke's reassurance that uh, nothing's going to end quite uh, as easily and as soon. Uh, so we've had our pullback. Uh, some things in the global space are still not looking very comfortable. Uh, you may have expected the U.S. bond deal to come below 2.5. That's still lingering around 260 of the highs, but still hanging in there. Crude is, crude is still uncomfortably high for us uh, at almost $109. Uh, Some of the internals of this <coughs> Chinese data doesn't look that great either. People were expecting bad data from China, so yeah. at least we got 7.5% because some people were talking about numbers like 7.2. So that's not happened, but it's not comfortable data at all, uh, though the industrial data, frankly, is quite bad in China. Disappointing, exactly. So uh, it's, it's a wishy-washy kind of global environment. I uh, think uh, after the pullback, people will once again sit back and take note of whether the markets need to rally even further from here from what they've done last week. Uh, so it's not as bad as it was 10 days back, but uh, I think one needs to keep in mind that some amount of recalibration has happened already. Primarily for us because of the money commitment that's come through these last two days. That's been the standout feature of this pullback. I think, frankly, that's the only thing which has changed. I mean, that's the reason we are not at 5,700 and at 6,000. Yeah. The fact that people are breathing a little bit more easily on the foreign flows front. Yes, outflows have stopped for the moment. Uh, I think the market needs to pause now, Mithali, uh, because uh, we've had a 300-point-plus rally. You saw the macro data on Friday. It's not comforting at all. Yes, we've had a couple of good results, but as we wait deeper into the earnings season, I think we'll see far more warts from the earnings season. So the macro is a reminder that things are still very difficult for India. But you may occasionally have these bouts of pessimism and optimism because of the way FIR flows are moving, because that's pretty much the one thing which drives the market. But the underlying is still quite weak, and that does not go away with rallies or busts in the market. So I think it's still a very challenging uh, kind of trough for the market, and therefore at 6,000 plus, you would tend to think that the market needs to pause here. As is uh, the broader <coughs> market, a reminder of that, Udyan. I mean, by Friday, there mm. was such a big gap between, you know, where the broader market got left behind versus what was happening with the index that that's probably reflective that a part of the market is getting exhausted now. Well, a part of the market never participated there. Uh, yeah. So it was just a few stocks. I mean, Infosys did its bit on Friday. So a few large cap names are attracting some global capital and uh, that's keeping the nifty up uh, but i think the broader market is pretty much reflecting what the underlying economic reality is uh, because you might see a handful of high quality names still delivering good earnings but with the kind of macro that we are working with now it's very difficult for the larger basket of companies to uh, deliver any kind of growth and that pretty much is i think the market's doing the right thing i mean when it gets flows it goes into a 10 high quality names the nifty optically looks high but the broader market is still exhibiting a lot of stress and pain, and that's why it's just not participating. But as you we were discussing, it covered a lot of ground, I mean, just from the limited point of view of the index last week. Yes, it did. And it's got to do, of course, with the FI numbers, which have turned positive for the last three days. Uh, so it's been a good run. But I think now, yeah, I mean, the market can go up another 100, 150 points easily if the FI buying continues. But fundamentally, I think... Uh, one should start getting a little cautious out here because beyond the point, there is no reason for the market to move up significantly from here. Uh, I think the macros are still quite shaky. Um, our global pullback was probably warranted, and that's happened. Uh, I mean, India was not unique last week. Most global markets went up 25 to 4%, and we did the same. Uh, so this has been a gr global recalibration in which we've played our part as well. But I think now to suggest that the Nifty will move up significantly from these levels... Uh, I think it's probably pushing it fundamentally. But, so technicals might still lead to a continuation of this move, but I think fundamentally you would want to start getting a bit cautious out here because, as I was saying earlier, things looked still quite challenging fundamentally. The macro is actually a bit disturbing, Uthian. I mean, uh, no mm. one puts too much stock by IIP, but there are many other moving parts there that didn't look good, frankly, on Friday. 
Yeah, even the IIP, I mean, it's a volatile set of data, but if even if you take the average of the last two months, uh, the average of the last two months is zero growth for IIP, which is which does not sit well with all this talk of gradual recovery happening in the economy. I but I've been saying for some time that GDP numbers for this current quarter might actually throw in some kind of negative surprise. Uh, people are not pulling down their full year GDP numbers yet, but I think they are they could probably come in lower than even the lower estimates uh, that we are talking about. Uh, also, you know, the if you look at the trade deficit numbers, exports are very weak for yeah. the second month running, 4.5% drop in exports. So once we get past our fixation with what happened to gold for a particular month, we'll figure out that there are other things which are hurting the trade deficit. So with this kind of export growth and this kind of industrial growth, I think we're looking at a fairly challenging kind of a macro growth picture out here. But CPI remains quite elevated, so that will probably stay the RBI's hand. Also, the government should not do these childish things that they're doing, putting out the good data during market hours, putting out the bad data after markets close. Uh, you know, that's so defensive uh, that it gets very easily picked up uh, by the market. So a few days back, RBI advanced data so that the rupee could be defended and suddenly surprise the market with a set of positive data. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't want to be doing these kind of things. Uh, it betrays too much of a sensitivity to what financial markets are doing and you can't hide by bad data beyond a point. Uh, so that's as an aside, but I think the macro data on Friday was frankly quite discouraging. And if you were to just track the performance since that big crash on gold prices, things have actually moved against us on most points. As you said, exports are weak. Um, frankly, inflation numbers are not very supportive right now. So th it hasn't been that good going the way things have trended. And of course, they're screwed. Yeah, all of that is not good. So I can't see how the RBI will cut rates, not just in July. I mean, it would frankly be a surprise if they went ahead and cut rates. But And if they did, I think they will warn the market sternly that this is the last of it because there's no reason for them to cut rates. Though I believe that they probably will not uh, later this month. Uh, so I think the macro is difficult and it will show up in the ma micro as well. I mean, it did show up in the last quarter earnings calendar. Yeah. And I guess you will see more of it as the weeks roll by in this car. Uh, this quarter's earnings as well. So the macro and micro are not very divorced at this point in time. Uh, and that remains a fundamental headwind for the market. Uh, markets usually do not uh, revalue themselves on the way up when none of these driving factors barring liquidity are in place. So liquidity is questionable. Last week was at least good. But none of the other factors are there. Uh, you're not seeing any kind of earnings pick up. Macro is weak currency is bad. This is not typically the time when the markets can move to a higher PE multiple, which is why I'm saying that once you get past 6,000, a lot of stock prices get fairly difficult to justify.